friends welcome or welcome back to my channel welcome to the first episode in a new series on my channel that i'm gonna call life and lit diaries which is gonna be basically me vlogging things about my life and also about the literature i'm reading i thought it would be a cool name we'll see how it goes <laughs> it's sunday right now so a good start to the week do you guys see sunday as the start of the week or the end of the week i kind of see it as a mix because i feel like i'm preparing a lot of things for the week but i don't see it as like the start of the week i don't know anyways putting away some of the tea that i got today got raspberry leaf tea one of my faves and then chamomile which is my boyfriend's fave and then i think i'm gonna make some green tea because i felt like i was robbed today with my coffee in the morning usually when i have my coffee i like to really savor it because i only have one coffee a day because if i have two coffees i can't sleep at night <laughs> But one coffee is good. So this morning I was rushing. While we wait for the water to boil, I want to go over my meal plan for the week. We're still making our way through the Dinner Tonight new cookbook by Alex Snodgrass. It is already so dirty. So I have a couple dishes from there. But the meal plan this week. Um, we're going to do a beef pot roast with some potatoes and mixed veggies and a cucumber salad. Then we're making a sheet pan chicken shawarma with rice dish. I'm going to make that today. And then I'm also making today this sheet pan coconut fish with broccoli and sweet potato. And then I'm also making like a roasted chicken breast with some millet and this beet and fennel salad I saw online. I think it's going to be so good. And then we're going to make a chili oil pork and cabbage stir fry. And then I want to make this to have as like a dessert this week. It's this one pot grain free brownies. <laughs> It may not look like much, but I did test it and this actually tastes fantastic. You're supposed to make a uh, honey chili drizzle on top, but I don't have sriracha. I forgot to get some and that's what you need for it. So I'm just going to use this hot honey and then we'll come back and make some more food <laughs> i've been listening to the audiobook for a tale of two cities to finish it up just finished it try not to cry i've got thoughts but ouchie that end it hurt <laughs> sorry if you hear my washing machine uh yeah folding laundry having a grand old time with some tears. Some boring oatmeal. <laughs> Good morning. It is... So I have to leave in 10 minutes for Pilates. So I'm having a quick breakfast. Usually I like to have eaten by now, 
because my Pilates class is at 7, so I like to finish by 6.30 to have, like, some time, but I'm just gonna feel it a little bit <laughs> during my class. Whenever I go to early morning classes, usually I don't vlog because my boyfriend's either getting ready or he um, is sleeping. But today he's at the gym right now, so I guess we can talk. This morning I'm wearing purple to the gym. I've been wearing a lot of winter colors and I don't know, last night I felt like let's just wear something bright for Monday morning. And then when we get back home, we'll make some breakfast and start work. I stayed up way later than I wanted to, which was like, I went to bed at 11. Yeah, I was reading Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. I'm, I'm still reading it. I'm, I think, on page 250, something like that, maybe 300. It's so good. Oh my god. All right. Did you hear my stomach? Oh my god. So we've got a protein smoothie and then my other beverage, my greens. Busy day at work, lots of meetings and lots of stuff to do. So I'm hoping today will fly by and then tonight we prepare because I'm going in office tomorrow. I've been working from home remotely for, I guess, almost four years. Wow, that's crazy and going in office here and there but now uh i'll be going every week one to two times a week so it's gonna be a little bit of a change um we'll see how it goes but yeah so tomorrow is my first in office day officially even though we were just in the office uh at christmas time but yeah time to work i'll talk to you all when i have some type of update hopefully at lunch when we can read <laughs> I'm currently packing my lunch for my official office day and snacking on dinner. This is how my beef stew came out. So just pack some of that with the side of this like cucumber salad. It's like a Polish salad. And then I have some orange peel, some tea because I can't live without tea some popcorn, some nuts and mulberries, and then these grain-free brownies that I made yesterday. And I think this should be more than enough <laughs> to survive my workday tomorrow. It is 8.16 and I've packed my bag, I've packed my lunch, I've gotten ready for bed, did my skincare, and I made a tea the first of the night. <laughs> and I've got my book here. And I'm so excited. I didn't get to read at lunch. So time to binge this for the next like two hours and then go to bed. Because I would say it's an early wake up tomorrow. But it's the same time that I would wake up to go to Pilates. Which is 5.45 a.m. I set out also all my readings, my daily readings here on the couch so that it's all ready for me so I can do it before work. I'll probably go over kind of my like daily reading routine with you guys maybe on Wednesday. Thursday now. Sorry that I haven't been updating you all. On Tuesday, I went into the office. I was so tired when I came home. I sat on the couch for two hours, then got my butt up and went to yoga, and it was beautiful. And then yesterday was just another hectic day, and I had a 
I wouldn't say emergency, but impromptu dentist appointment that left my mouth super, super numb. And I wanted to give a little update because I have finished two books in the past three days. And the first one we talked about together, I think I was in the mi middle or starting or somewhere in between of Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. I gave this five stars. This is my first five star. No, I gave Ruthless Vows five stars, but I think this is my favorite of the year so far. It is about a woman named Yasmin or Yas and her husband or ex-husband Josiah meet them while they're divorced and they're co-parenting their children and it is like a second chance romance and it was so beautiful. It covered so many topics about grief and the, the things that they had to go through as a couple were so so traumatic and I don't want to go too much into it. There are on Kennedy Ryan's Instagram she goes through all the different tropes in all of her books and so if you want to know more uh, I would definitely go to her Instagram but I don't want to just in case you don't want any spoilers of the plot but this was just so heartbreaking yet heartwarming. I loved the girl friendship in this book and the series actually follows all three girls. So the first book is about Yasmin, the second book is about Soledad and or Sol, and the last book is about Hendrix. So I adored this book. It was so beautiful and it gave me such heartwarming feelings. There is a little bit of smut in here, um, but it wasn't like overpowering. I definitely think it didn't take away from the story. Would highly, highly recommend it. And this is my first book that I read for my 24 in 2024. So that is also very, very exciting and a great start. If you watched my 24 in 2024, you would know that I added that to my list because I got the arc for the second book. And usually when it comes to a series, I take breaks in between books. I don't know why, but I typically don't really go straight into the next book. But I loved this book so much that I went to that arc, clicked download, and read it any chance I got. So the next book in the series is This Could Be Us, which is a beautiful cover. These covers in general are so gorgeous. So This Could Be Us covers... Um, in the friend group Sol or Soledad and her and Judah. And so when you meet Soledad in book one, she's married to a man named Edward, but completely miserable. This man is horrible to her. And I don't wanna say anything past that. Both of her friends are like, you need to leave this man. And she has three daughters and it was so beautiful. There was, a lot of autism representation in this book which was very fascinating to me because it's not something you see a lot but even in I think I've read another book that had autism rep in it but I feel like this one really went in depth and actually taught me quite a bit about the spectrum and so many things that go into um, children getting diagnosed with autism and Judah is such an amazing father and soul is such an amazing mother it's just they were perfection and i loved them so much i finished that book so fast i read it in two days usually i don't sacrifice sleep for reading but i did a little okay i had to it was just so good so my week has been fantastic with these two books i've loved them so much last night i also started East of Eden by John Steinbeck. It is the January to February pick for the Hardcore Literature Book Club. So I wanted to pick it up because I want to try finishing it by the end of January. So we've got, I think, six days. Um, I read about like eight, ten pages. So far, so good. It's so early on. It's a huge book, but John Steinbeck's writing is so wonderful. I've got no complaints here. <laughs> I 
went for a quick walk because it's been pouring since last night and the sun came out. So I was like, hello ma'am, I haven't seen you in a long time. Where you been, loca? And I also stopped by No Frills and I got some pizzas to try that were 30% off. So I got a meat lover's pizza and a cheese pizza and they're in the oven right now. So we're gonna have that for lunch. And I also made a salad. This one looking divine and it smells pretty good. Doesn't smell as good as the homemade pizzas that I make, but this was very impromptu. <laughs> I completely forgot about the egg <laughs> and so I let it sit for a little too long so it's not as ooey gooey delicious but that's fine I only did half the sauce packet because um, I don't know how spicy it's gonna be and I don't want it to hurt my stomach so hey right, cheers that is very good flavor but I'm happy I did like a little bit more than half of the sauce packet because that would have been really really spicy but it's very similar to other um, spicy ramens that I've made this one is just like the not the ramen soup but just the ramen noodle so yeah that's my girl dinner I guess I'm going to continue reading John Steinbeck's East of Eden I'm on page 29 getting very good like from the jump very fascinating and intriguing and then i wanted to also talk about miss tale of two cities because i realized i did not give you a proper review after my initial reaction to finishing this book and so i wanted to talk about that as well but first we're gonna have some dinner Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens earlier this week. I believe it was on Sunday, so five days ago. And this is my pretty edition. I took this cover off while I was reading it so I don't ruin it anymore. But I decided to give this book four stars. This is my third Charles Dickens. So I read David Copperfield and A Christmas Carol last year, which I both ended up giving five stars and this one I do think it would have been a five star in s different circumstances and I think with a reread it would be five stars um Charles Dickens after I read David Copperfield I just knew he was going to be a favorite author his writing is just beautiful there's like nothing like his writing to me I picked up A Tale of Two Cities at the end of December when I was just so busy. Like life was so hectic. I was trying to read this because it was the pick for the Secret Dickens for the Hardcore Literature Book Club. So I was trying to get to it at the same time trying to live life in December which is so hectic and still stick with all of my reading for my channel and personal reading and work <laughs> so it was a lot and then I got sick so I think it was just not the best timing to pick it up because the first half of the book felt like it was just dragging on for me but then I pushed through and then the second half got very chaotic so much was happening so much heartbreak the ending 
I was crying like very like tearing up and I've never read a book where the first line and the last line are so epic and quotable you will definitely have heard the first line of this book I didn't realize it was from A Tale of Two Cities but the first line of this book is it was the best of times it was the worst of times and I've heard that my whole life and I did not realize it was from Dickens's A Tale of Two Cities but yeah so I definitely went on with the second half a lot more it was fantastic and because this book takes place in and around the French Revolution I think if I knew more about it, I definitely would also enjoy this more. I was kind of a little clueless, I guess you could say, and I don't really remember learning much about the French Revolution in school. I possibly did, and I just don't recall it, but I do want to look into it more and kind of understand it more, and I have been reading more about this book and, you know, the meanings of things, but yeah, overall... I mean, it's Dickens. It's such a masterpiece. And I have heard that a lot of people do find that their first read is a little bit more challenging. And then when they come back to the book, it's fantastic. So that's my little update for A Tale of Two Cities. We read quite a few books together this week, even though my vlogging was here and there. That's been three books, A Tale of Two Cities, uh, Before I Let Go, and This Could Be Us. And now we're getting on with East of Eden. So two romances and two classics. Sounds about right. That is that. Tomorrow I do have a yoga class. No, sorry, Pilates class. And I'm also going to do groceries. So busy morning. Battery's dying, so talk tomorrow. Sugar. Good afternoon. Oh wow, look, it's... Hello, 11-11. Are you gonna focus? I'm about to go to a Pilates class, but I quickly did my little morning reading and journaling routine that I've really been enjoying and I've implemented since the beginning of this year. It's something that I started last year but stopped when life got too busy so I'm trying to make it a habit so that I'm not too busy to do it and I timed it so today while eating it took me seven and a half minutes to do so that's not less than 10 minutes of my time to do this every single day I think it's possible. The two books that I'm doing like daily readings from are these ones. So this one is A Calendar of Wisdom by Leo Tolstoy. I got this recommendation from Ben McAvoy. This one's a fantastic one. So it was written by Leo Tolstoy. Um, so it is some of his like writings or his thoughts, but it's also filled with a lot of uh, different people's quotes. Sometimes it's from the Bible, sometimes from Buddha. And so every day you have just a few different passages. Some days are shorter than others. Um, and so I typically read through that. And then if there's any specific passage that 
really sticks out to me or really makes me think, then I write it in this journal that I have here. So you'll see I just have like every single day I usually write, I try writing at least one thing. And I like looking back at this, you know, every couple of days and it's very inspirational and kind of gets me back in the right mindset. Then along with that, I'm also reading A Year with Rilke. So this is written by Joanna Macy and Anita Barrows or Barrows. So they took all of I'm not sure if it's all, but they took a lot of Rilke's poetry and letters and combined it into like a daily reading. And so it's, I've also really, really enjoyed this. Um, I am finding I'm enjoying the letters more than the poetry, but some of the poetry, it's been very, very impactful. So sometimes I'll write also things from here into that journal, but for the most part, I don't. So that's my little reading in the morning to kind of get me in the right mindset, get me in a happy, inspirational, motivated mood. And then I've been wanting to start daily journaling and I've always put so much pressure on it. And Melissa, but I don't remember her handle, but she wrote down, so she wrote here a bunch of January prompts. And so, I wrote them all down and I've been going through every day and just journaling the prompt, whatever it is. And most of the time it takes me a minute, two minutes, maybe three minutes to do. And so I've also really been enjoying that. And that's my little morning journaling reading routine. And I feel like it's just been a lot of fun. It's been easy to do and to do every day and it's something that I think I will be able to stick to. I've been doing it for almost a month so I think they say how long does it take to grow a habit? 60 days? I gotta go. It's Pilates time so you can do a little OOTD. My Gymshark um, crop top, Gymshark um, sports bra and these Lulu lemon really pretty like emerald green leggings and oh spice you want to show them your OOTD what are you wearing today hey what are you wearing today and I've got some Gymshark socks on, but I take those off in class. So, we're gonna go, right baby? Yeah. Lazy Sunday mornings, hiding under covers. I don't mind staying in with you. Play your favorite movie, playing right beside me. I don't mind when it's just us two. The corner coffee shop we like to go. Late night walks with you to take me home. With you, I never feel alone. These little songs. Make me glad to call you mine And you have got my head in the clouds oh. All that I need is your body next to me On rainy days, just need your company Don't need too much, just your simple love and it's Joy of hearing your voice every 